Hello everybody, this is Gamertag Your Willy for the first of many tutorials to come. Now, I'm going to show you the very basics of how to forge. It's going to be very simple stuff, so if you have forged before in either Halo 3 or in Halo Reach, you probably don't n need to know all this. You've already done it learn by self experience or whatever but for those of you who have never forged before or you know sometimes has trouble with it I'm gonna set up this tutorial I'm gonna try and make it as simple as I possibly can and if it's hard for you to understand post a comment let me know and I'll make an even more specific tutorial on that exact question um, I'm gonna go ahead and forge on Forge World. I could forge on Tempest, but Forge World everybody has. Tempest only people with the Noble Map Pack has. They're the only maps that you can forge on. So Forge World, perfect for using on these tutorials. So let's go ahead and get this started. Now Everybody knows basic movements for the player because I mean you've played reach you're viewing these tutorials So you know how to you know run around shoot all that stuff but When you need to get into the editing mode Which I always call orb mode to get into that you need to hit up on the d-pad To get back into player mode you hit up again Another way to do it, like let's say you have an old controller or your cat spilled soda on it and the D-pad no longer works. Another way to do that is you hit start and go to edit mode. Start, go to player mode. It's a little bit more tedious, but if your controller doesn't work as well as it used to, you can still get into those editing modes. I had to do that once because I dropped my controller and the D-pad thing stopped working. I got a new controller obviously by then, it was like years ago that that happened. But first thing I always do whenever I start a map, even if it's going to be in the Colosseum here, I go into edit mode and I fly over to here. Now to fly around, like I said I'm going to make this very basic, but to fly around you use your left D stick to move back, forward, into stride just like you would when you're playing reach. Uh, in player mode and then the right stick is for looking around and looking up and down so if you want to go higher using that you can look up push forward and look down but that's kind of annoying so a quicker way of going up and down is you use the bumpers so right bumper is up straight up and left bumper is straight down so over time if you've never ever ever been in this mode before it takes a little bit of learning but you you catch on really quickly on how to move around and stuff like that. Another thing to remember for movement is you're kind of slow, which is a good thing when you're trying to edit, but if you're trying to get from here to there, it takes a while. You can hit the left trigger and that'll make you move a lot faster. You gotta be careful though, because if you're in the left trigger like I am now, you're moving pretty fast, and then you go into player mode, you will probably just kill yourself. I almost did, but I hit up on the D-pad quick enough so it didn't kill me. So those are the basic movements. Now that you understand that, let's figure out what these things are. These are the initial spawn points. This is when you start a game, you spawn right here. Um, you can tell because it has the person on it with the trigger, which means that's where they're pointing. Obviously red is for red team, and blue is for blue team. White is always neutral. So this is non-team specific games, you use neutral for like free, like uh, free for all games or that kind of stuff. You'll use the white. So they set up three here, but I don't want to spawn here when I start my game because I, I'm not going to build here. So what I always do is I go into edit mode and I look at it so that the icon is green. And as you can see in the very bottom right here, it describes what all the buttons do. So Y is delete object, so I go ahead and delete them. And I always do this before I do anything else because I sometimes like I'm building and I forget. See now I'm using the left trigger to move faster and move up here. 
um, but sometimes I forget how to do that. Now, now that you know movement and how to delete, let's actually create an object. To create an object, you hit X, and this shows you everything that's buildable in Forge. So you got human weapons, covenant weapons, armor, vehicle, gadgets, bonding stuff, objectives, scenery, and structures. Now I always, once I get to where I want to build, I build my spawn initial. So initial spawn point. You see that little dollar sign? That's how much it costs. Spawn points are always free. You got 250 of them. Now, I'm going to go ahead and build one here. Sometimes I build two if I know that friends might join me. Like if I have a friend who's going to help me out or I want to show it off to somebody, I usually build a couple. So now you see I have 48. Now I build a respawn point. They're the ones that don't have a person on them. Those are if you die, you respawn there. And you always want to have at least one of those down. Because, trust me, you will probably end up killing yourself some way or another while you're creating maps. Now that you have initials and spawn points, let's start making something. So you go into your object and see you're in the spawn point. So you hit B to go back and then A on structures. This is where all your real building type stuff is. I like using building blocks a lot. Some people like using buildings. I do not because you only have 12 and that's 12 in the whole category, not just 12 of each. And they cost 150, which if you've never forged before, 150 is like, well, what is 150 relative to? If you look down here at the bottom, you can see 10,000 for your budget. That's once that budget is met, it doesn't matter if you have 50 pieces left over, you cannot place them down. So I usually try and use the cheapest pieces <laughs> as much as I can. I only use buildings if it structurally looks good for what I need, like pyramids, you know. That would take a lot of building blocks and stuff to make. So if this piece looks good for me, then I'll use it. So. As you saw, I went and hit X, and I hit Pyramid, so I hit A, and that placed it down for me. Now, let's actually move this somewhere. Um, as you can see, I'm kind of swerving around, so it's not moving at all. But if I use the left stick, I can move it back and forth, up and down. Now, for those of you who don't know how like anything about game art and game design and stuff like that remember basic math and you have a graph and it has the x and the y corner on the graph well in 3d worlds you actually have three you have x y and z so this is moving on one like let's say x i don't know if it's really x but let's just say this is x and this is y but how do you move on z which is up and down you use the bumpers to do that which is above the triggers so right bumper is up left bumper is down now that's good and all that I wanna put it here let's go ahead and put that right there and let's move it a little bit lower perfect now I wanna build another object so I go back into the menu here and let's go and build something on inclines I love using inclines too because you can make walls out of these things and all that and I'll show you a more specific tutorial on that later. Let's go ahead and go to ramp 2x2 two two steep. Okay now I want to put this on top of here but it's not going the angle I want so I'll show you a couple ways of fixing that in the next tutorial. So I'll see you all there and well, I guess I'll just see you all there. <laughs>